So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about food sourcing, which is probably where most people begin to get really intimidating with the lifestyle change aspect that we talk about here because it's time. It's time invested. Now, I want you to think really quickly about, did, have any of you ever started a new job before? Yeah. OK, so a lot of us have. When you start a new job, even picking up the telephone and saying who you are and who you represent is awkward again. Something that you used to do without even thinking. And picking up that phone and learning the new, <laughs> how many times have you said the old company's name and who you are? It's, it's something new and it, it takes getting used to again. So you're gonna walk into a grocery store tomorrow or the next time you walk into a grocery store and it's gonna feel like a new experience again because you're gonna be equipped with a lot more information to make your decisions with. And what I wanna do is I wanna encourage you before we even get going into the information, because I know what you're all thinking right now as you've probably read ahead in the book a little bit to try to anticipate what was going to be said and figure out if you needed to be here, if you needed to watch this one. I wanna encourage you and let you know that just like anything else in life, this will become second nature. You will become very skilled at this, and you will learn how to delineate foods that are delivering massive amounts of nutrition for your dollar versus foods that are not worth the box that they're put in, okay? So let's get rocking on lesson three. Shop till you drop. I know there's a lot of people who like to shop in here, so hopefully we can ex excite you with the title. So many of you, as I said in lesson one, many of you were hoping just to come in here and get the diet right away. And that's not what happened. So I wanna to try to explain and open up this lesson and help you understand that you can go out and follow any meal plan. There's a lot of meal plans out there that'll help you learn how to put food in order and how to plan for it and do all of those things. But no matter what meal plan you're following, this information will help you do it better, okay? And we have a meal planning process. We're gonna to get to it next week. You have that in your reference guide as well. But what we wanna hit on first is, you know, we don't wanna put the cart before the horse because food sourcing is the horse in this conversation. You have to go to the grocery store or you have to find your farmer before you can start a meal plan. You've gotta go get the food before you can put it into a planning process and begin to prepare it and put it in your lunchbox and take it to work. So we have to make sure that we're going out and buying the right foods before we even begin to look at how we're going to start balancing our proteins and carbs and fats, okay? So no matter what kind of meal plan or diet that you have tried in the past or are going to try or are trying right now, it's necessary to understand how important food sourcing is. It's time to become a savvy consumer to increase the nutritional impact of your dollar and increase your health and vitality at the same time. Many of you have this idea in the back of your head that eating better costs more money, okay? And I'd have to tell you, if I was thinking with your thought process, I'd have to agree with you. Because most people think that size or how much food you're getting in weight, how much volume you can get for your dollar, that that's value. And in my definition of food being value, I look at how much nutrition the food is going to deliver for the dollar that I'm spending for it. It's a complete different paradigm than what we look at in a supersized nation like America, where we, we absolutely crave bulk. We want size, we want it heavy, and we want as much as we can get for the, as little as we can possibly get. The problem is, is look around at what's going on in our health situation. You heard in lesson one, we have an epidemic of preventable disease that's being caused by our attitude towards food. The very way that we think about food and how we make decisions about food and how we go out and buy food is causing the very diseases that are killing a lot of us or taking the quality of life from us. 
And it's important that we begin to look at food to increase our health, but also that we change the way that we make our purchasing de decisions. So that we want to look at more nutrition for the dollar, not necessarily bulk in size. So more than ever in our history, the way foods are grown, handled, and created is changing the nutritional value and the potential benefits that the food was created for. Okay, remember when I talked about the difference between apple and applesauce last week? That's what this conversation is about. Because in that process of that apple traveling through whatever process it needs to go to to end up in that plastic container that is going to stay good for years, there's things being done to that apple. And there's changes in the dynamics of what that apple was designed to deliver to you, what it was designed to do to your body. So this entire conversation around food sourcing is looking at making better decisions, taking into account this is your value proposition again, taking into account how your food is grown, handled, and created. That's part of your purchasing decision now, not just the bulk and the size and how much you're gonna get for your dollar. It's knowing that your food is going to be as close to the source as it can get, because I don't know about you, but I believe food in its most whole source is designed very, very well for our body. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Okay, good, we're on the same page, this is good. We'll keep it going. So what is food sourcing? Our definition of food sourcing for the conscious and savvy consumer, which is why all of you are here, because you want to become more savvy, is the practice of researching and purchasing foods that include consideration of these factors. Now this is an immense list. And again, you're not going to be able to go home and do all of this. Some of you may already look at these things now. But these are things, if you are looking at your meal plan holistically, again, taking all things into consideration, this is what food sourcing is. Knowing the seed origin or the genetics of the food that you're buying. Again, you've probably heard a lot of information on genetically modified foods, okay, or organic foods, and, and what each of those areas will allow to happen in the growth process, or what they'll allow to happen to the traits of the seeds before they're actually planted growth practices in, uh, of the food or the ingredients. Harvest techniques, how is that food being harvested? What's going on when it actually gets picked and it gets stored? Is it gonna change the dynamic of the food? It definitely can, so it's good to know about it. Processing and packaging, do, do all of you know that your food can be irradiated with radiation? That most of your food is if you're not buying organic? It goes through radiation tunnels to help to kill more of the bacteria that's on it. So if you're not eating organic food, one of the things in processing and packaging is that most of the food you're eating is being radiated before it even gets to the grocery store. Many of you don't know that. Sales channels and distribu distribution, so this affects the timing from when your food is actually harvested to when it gets to your table. This can change the nutritional impact of the food you're buying. So if you're going to spend a dollar on an apple, you better make sure you're buying an apple that has the most enzymatic activity in it. It is the, the freshest pick, picked apple it can possibly be. Versus one that, if you have an alternative, versus one that's shipped across continents and things like, things like that, right? You'd rather have the one in your backyard, believe me. And then support of the industry or grower. One of the things that we are going to make sure you are clear on when you get out of here and after you've listened to this lesson is that every time you hand a dollar over the counter, you are saying, yes, I agree with how you grew this food. I agree with the distribution practices. I agree with everything because I'm giving you another dollar to do it again. Maybe you guys have never really thought of that before, but you have choices now. The beauty is, is 10 years ago, you didn't have as many choices as you do today. So this lesson is timely, because now you actually can go out and you can say, hey, I'm gonna think twice before I hand this dollar to someone because I wanna make sure, I wanna make sure that when I'm handing it to them, I'm supporting something that I truly do believe in. I, wanna, I want to multiply the way this farmer is growing this food. 
And, and many of you here don't know your farmer. You say, what? My food comes from a grocery store. What's a farmer? I know you're smarter than that. We're in Iowa. <laughs> but it's beginning to know your farmer again. And this was one of the things that we used to say in the clinic, too, was knowing your farmer is as important, if not more, than knowing your doc. Because all of these diseases can be prevented by getting the potent food that farmers, going direct to farmers, can provide you. So why should food sourcing matter to you? Well, here are a few things that have been shown to have an impact on nutritional value on foods you eat, which in turn can drastically impact the food's effectiveness in your body and your health or in your disease. Genetic modification is one of the things that we talk about. And the reason we do is not because I can bring a bunch of conclusive evidence to you today that it harms people. It's because I can't bring you evidence that it's safe. I'm not going to stand up here and try to lambast the conventional farming community for genetically modifying their food, because the reason it was done was to try to produce more food safely. It honestly had good intentions behind it. I don't think it was a bad thing. However, in the process of genetic modification, we've now engineered insecticide directly into plants so that bugs will die if they get close or eat them, which is a neurotoxin. It freezes up their nervous system. And the big issue is that countries, other countries, when this was introduced, would not do it because there was no proof it was safe. But we made a different decision, and we went forward and said, well, we can't prove it's dangerous, so let's rock and roll. And I'll give you a little bit of statistics. We've got a graph coming up that's going to show you a little bit of why we might want to be concerned about genetic modification. The diets of animals or plants. How many people think what you eat affects your body? We've, we, hopefully we've learned enough to, to know that by this time. So wouldn't you think that the diet that an animal eats affects its body? That is, there is no, that's not indirect Ladies and gentlemen, when you eat an animal who's eaten an appropriate diet, it's a better product. You're getting more nutrition. Opposed to eating an animal or a plant that did not get natural nutrition in its lifespan, perhaps it was artificially pushed to grow, and it wasn't able to develop in its time. That changes things. Processes that your food goes through prior to arriving at the supermarket, including harvesting and shipping, packaging of the food, nutrients that are taken out of foods, and synthetics that are added back in. We all know the term enriched, right? You've heard of the term enriched. That's exactly what enriching is. When you get a natural food, one of the downsides when you're trying to commercialize a natural food is it goes bad. It spoils. If you buy a natural food, it's going to spoil. What the food companies were able to do is they were able to find out how to take out these natural organic compounds that are in foods and how to put in preservatives to stop the process of going bad. The only problem is, is those preservatives don't go without consequence. What we're doing to our food is they're, they're taking out compounds that were in that food for a reason. They served your body well. There was purpose there. And they're putting in synthetic things that, that are not in the, the, the same ratio that nature would have put it there. They're not surrounded with the same compounds and the same uh, complementary types of enzymes and things like that. So now you've, you've got an issue. You've got synthetic nutrients in food such as fortified with certain vitamins. These aren't natural vitamins, people. They aren't the same as the vitamins that were there to begin with. And that food will stay without mold or breakdown. It completely stops the half-life process, which means it's become partially synthetic by definition. That's a problem. And then the chemicals used to grow food, OK? There's, again, this is another one of those subjects where you're going to see science stacked up to the ceiling 
supporting the use of chemicals on food because there's an awful lot of industry that depends on chemicals being used in our food growth. Petrochemicals, things that are created to either kill bugs or to lock up certain nutrients in the soil so weeds can't proliferate and grow. And the problem is, is we have dumped tons, millions of tons of these synthetic chemicals on our soil and on our food and said, oh, it's not going to affect anything. Things, things are changing. Chemicals being used on our food and in our soil, it's changing the, the, the balance and the, the macro and micro activity in our soil, which don't you think if the soil's changing, it's going to change the nutrition of the plant? The answer is yes. Just like an animal's diet is going to change its health, just like your diet changes your health, if we change the soil, we're getting changes, and they're not positive changes, in our plant supply. So it's important to consider food sourcing for two main reasons. Number one, increased nutritional value. And again, you're going to see a lot of research out there saying that conventionally raised food is exactly the same as organic food. And there's, there's other research showing that organic food is superior. So you're going to have to decide. In my experience, when, when I have seen people make the change to organic food, it has made immense impact immediately. Number two, decreased exposure and ingestion of harmful ingredients, additives, and chemicals. For those of you who are wildly analytical and you love data, I can't give you a bunch of data on the increased nutritional value. So you can go ahead and put a line through number one. Go ahead and put a line through it. Say, I don't buy it. I get the same nutrition from conventional food as I do from organic. I'm not going to buy that. OK, I'll give you that. Number two, how many of you want to continue to expose yourself to all kinds of random chemicals that haven't been proven safe? If you had an option. I don't see a lot of hands going up. Most of us are here, and we're curious about health, because we're looking to try to reduce the exposures that we're giving to our bodies on a day-to-day -day basis. We're here to improve our chances of being healthy. And I can promise you, decreasing your, your exposure to these chemicals and these additives that are being put into food absolutely 100% can be proven to improve your health. And it will happen fast. I wanted you to see some information here um, and a timeline of when the genetic modification of crops started in the United States. And you're going to see a graph coming up shortly that is going to, there's going to be some similarities. And we're not saying that they're directly connected, but I think you'll be able to get the point. OK? So first of all, you can see. And it, this number is pretty crazy. Soybeans, 94% of the soybean crop in this country is, is genetically modified. Cotton is the second highest. And you've got corn coming really fast behind it. These are the, the three big genetically modified crops with potatoes following very closely behind it and wheat following potatoes. Okay, so if you are purchasing non-organic food, if you're purchasing conventional food, well, obviously we're not eating cotton, but the corn and the soybeans are the stuff, that's where a lot of the food base in processed food, that's most of your food base. Okay, so we adopted it in the mid-90s. All of Europe said no. New Zealand, Australia, everyone said no. We're not introducing these crops. We do not know what they're going to do. We said, hey, why not? We'll give it a try. And then we were able to sell a whole bunch of chemicals to put on them because the plants genetically can withstand the chemicals. 
So you can see how increased these crops were and how much of them are being grown now. So these are the genetically modified crops. So the questions that you should answer when you purchase your food. Now this is the filters you want to start building into your thought process. Thought process. I would highlight these, I would underline them, I'd put a star by them. Because these questions are way more important than any diet you could ever go on. And that's more true today than it was 20 years ago. The more we have changed the growth of our crops and how we handle them, the more these questions become relevant. So where was my food raised and who raised it? How many people here can even answer that question at all right now? Some of you can. I know there's some food raisers right, right here right now. You're going to meet one in a little bit. So who raised it and where was it raised? Two, what were the gross growth practices? How was it raised? These are things that you want to know because they affect the nutritional impact of the food. They, they affect what the food is going to end up doing in your body. And number three, what was used on my food during the growth process? What processes were done? What was used on my food when it was being grown? It's not saying that nothing can be used on your food. It's just saying, what? Please tell me. I want to know. How many people here want to know what was put on their food when it was raised? It, to me, it's important. To you, it may not be important to everyone. I'm telling you right now, it's an important question to ask. 